Welcome everyone. Uh, it is a great privilege to be with you today and it's a great pleasure to welcome you all to our program. We have been having distinguished uh, scholars who work on Risale Nur and who wrote their doctoral dissertations on specific topics in relation to Said Nursi's Risale collection. As you all know so far in our programs, Risale is a unique commentary of the Quran. And today we have a distinguished guest who will focus on commentaries of the Quran in general and specifically the place and the role of Risale Nur, Said Nursi's Risale Nur, Epistles of Light. And our distinguished scholar is Hakan Choru, and he has a book titled Modern Interpretation of the Quran, the Contribution of Bedu Zaman Said Nursi by Paul Gray, published in 2019. And this book is focusing on Quran and Quranic exegesis and the Kelam movement, Ihya and Tejdid attempts in early Muslim modernism. And the special attention will be given, is given in the book to Bedu Zaman Said Nursi in relation to Muhammad Abdu and Ahmed Khan. While there are various similarities between Abdu and Nursi, and Nursi, as it is indicated in the book, Nursi himself declares in his old Said period that he is influenced by Abdu. As our distinguished scholar claims, and he will talk about, that Nursi ha has a di very distinct methodology. And I will not go into the details because we will hear as an extensive discussion from our scholar here, Dr. Hakan Choru. Let me briefly introduce Dr. Hakan Choru for you. <clears throat> Dr. Hakan Choru is a lecturer of Islamic studies at Charles Sturt University. He completed his PhD at Australian Catholic University in 2015. His PhD, his PhD research is on early modern exegesis of the Quran, Said Nursi, Muhammad Abdu, and Sir Ahmed Khan. Moreover, Hakan's, Dr. Hakan's main research interests are the classical and modern Quran exegesis, contemporary Islamic thought, Islamic legal theories, usul al fuqh, and jurisprudence, fuqh, Islamic ethics, akhlaq, Islamic theology, kelam, and comparative theology. Furthermore, he has been a principal supervisor for four HDR candidates, supervising many honors and coursework students as well. He has been higher degrees research coordinator for masters and PhD candidates in the Center of Islamic Studies since 2020. In addition, Dr. Hakan is actively involved in academic associations and community organizations. Dr. Hakan is currently the member of the Australian Association of Islamic and Muslim Studies, the member of PACT, Center for Public and Contextual Theology, and Practical and Public Ethics Research Group under Faculty of Arts and Education at Charles Sturt University. It is a privilege to have you here, Dr. Hakan. My friend Yonara and I will be the discussant for the uh, end of the uh, talk. And I would like to invite our audience who are listening to us uh, right now to prepare questions and share them with us at the chat box in our YouTube channel. We will be happy to address them and uh, inshallah, we will also be asking questions with my dear friend Yonara, as you know her. She doesn't need an introduction. And <laughs> I would like to uh, invite our distinguished scholar, Dr. Hakan Churu, to talk about his book. And please welcome him with me. Please, Dr. Hakan, the floor is yours. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Zuleha and Yonara, thank you so much for uh, this kind invitation. And uh, it is a pleasure to be with you here in this Risale uh, Academy uh, series. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. As I said, I am very happy 
are more than welcome uh, in this uh, series and i have shared my <coughs> presentation i have included some uh, important uh, points uh, from my book uh, introduction background motivation and some arguments and a brief summary of some chapters specifically i consider important of course, within a short time period, it is not uh, we cannot cover all aspects of the of the topic, all aspects of the book. But maybe just uh, what are the major contents? Just brief uh, clarifications and maybe some major points. This is the title of the book. Is uh, Zuleha said modern interpretation of the Quran, the contribution of Bidi Uzzaman, uh, Said Nursi. I said modern interpretation of the Quran, you know, with a new style, with his own unique style and uh, language, uh, modern interpretation of the Quran. And uh, just let me make it full screen. Yes. And uh, it is published by Palgrave uh, series uh, in 2019. This is my, uh, this is based on my PhD thesis. I have a little bit uh, made uh, minor revisions. Then after that, uh, it is published by Palgrave. But mainly, I have studied on this uh, topic throughout my PhD thesis around five to six years, five years specifically. How this research idea came uh, out in two thousand nine? I was in Sydney. Sorry, I was in Istanbul, uh, not not Sydney, not in Australia. I was in Istanbul. I was preparing myself for PhD for a PhD maybe in Istanbul or Sakarya uh, in any university uh, in Turkey. But I have received an invitation uh, from my uh, teacher, uh, from masters, uh, Professor Al Bayrak. Uh, he emailed me that uh, he, he was chairing a session, uh, he was chairing an Islamic studies uh, center uh, in Australia. And he emailed me that uh, actually I could be able to do my PhD. <coughs> Uh, I was very happy and I thought that this uh, actually was a good opportunity for me to do a PhD in English language uh, and uh, internationally uh, uh, in an international recognized university. I accepted that and of course I came to Australia in two, uh, at the end of 2009 and, and in 2010 then uh, I have started and uh, in Istanbul in Jalol uh, city of course I, I have uh, Already, I had already started to actually uh, uh, purchase some books related to my research. Uh, my supervisor provided me three topics, but I have uh, selected this one. I thought uh, because of uh, actually uh, very widespread influence of Risale Nur collection and author Bedu Zaman, and uh, he is very special for me. Uh, in my uh, early life, I thought this topic will actually could work for me. Um, another topic uh, recommendation was uh, Isa, Prophet Isa, and you know, second coming of uh, Isa uh, in Quran and Tafsirs. Then, uh, as I said, <coughs> throughout my PhD, I have focused on this research and I have completed uh, mainly, <coughs> I have focused on uh, Bediou Zaman and his collection. Uh, in general, but specifically his uh, one volume Quran commentary uh, called Isharat al ijaz Science of Inimitability, Isharat al ijaz and Muhakamat, the reasonings specifically, but in general all uh, his collection, uh, all his uh, works. And specifically I tried to uh, analyze him and his collection within the context of the beginning of 20th century, end of 19th century and beginning of 20th century and uh, beginning of Islamic modernism uh, through Muhammad Abdu from Egypt and Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan from India and a collapse of Ottoman, uh, Ottom, uh, Ottoman state, Ottoman Empire and of course uh, the Muslim world, situation of Muslim world and, uh, and Bedou Zaman's writings uh, and new Kalam movement beginning of 20th century here and Tajdeed renewals and attempts, uh, revival and renewal attempts uh, in early Muslim modernism. As I said, I try to analyze uh, Bediou Zaman in this context, uh, specifically 
his methods of Quran uh, tafsir. Why? Specific, my uh, research uh, book specifically focused on uh, focus on Rizalian collection in terms of traditional Islamic sciences because I have noticed that there are actually there have been many research and books on Bedu Zaman uh, from and Risale from sociological sociological cultural perspectives. There are many works on uh, this, but in English language uh, there is there was not much literature and works specifically. In terms of uh, traditional Islamic sciences, what is the place of this collection in tafsir, if it is tafsir or not, you know, or kalam or the, and his uh, hermeneutics maybe in the Western sense, you know, what is what what is the hermeneutics of Bedou Zaman in his uh, in his collection and. <clears throat> Existing literature indicates Nursi's multidisciplinary approach in his collection. Yeah, he had a he has a Quran-based methodology, and combined uh, the essence of what the Islamic disciplines included in a different form. You know what he pre perceives. Um, for this reason, actually, uh, his method is more, more maybe multidisciplinary, not just one. Uh, method, for example, some experts say that a collection is combination of uh, kalam, tasawwuf, and fiqh. For example, kalam, Islamic theology, tasawwuf, Islamic spirituality, mysticism, and fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence. Uh, Islamic jurisprudence, in terms of, for example, philosophy of worship, importance of worship, uh, uh, not detailed fiqh rulings, juristic rulings. You know what are the fard obligations of evolution or of uh, prayer, etc. But specifically, uh, maybe inner fiqh, as Imam Ghazali says, fiqh batin, inner fiqh, maybe more meaning, meaning, what is the meaning of worship? What is the meaning of faith? What is the meaning of worship? Uh, what are what are the realities or realities of these truth and concepts? The concepts, combination of uh, kalam, fiqh, and tasawwuf, as some experts say, but very multidisciplinary. Uh, <clears throat> but this book emphasizes that Nursi's revival of Islam and his renewal are based on uh, kalam, Islamic theology. And actually this, uh, rev uh, this uh, revival <clears throat> met method is compatible uh, with, with traditional Islamic scholarship. If we look at Imam uh, for Ghazali's Al-Mustasfa, for example, <clears throat> Imam, Imam Ghazali says that kalam is uh, is a comprehensive science which includes other disciplines as well. Yeah, kalam, ilm uh, kulli. You know, it is a comprehensive science discipline which includes other disciplines as well. But his he, his theory, hermetics, his actually method, tajdid uh, attempt is based on kalam, and actually he makes other disciplines as other other, other, discipline, other disciplines as a kind of kalam as well. Actually, he's uh, making other disciplines a kind of kalam as well. For example, his readings of biography of the prophets. You know, he is connecting kalam because uh, it is also con connected with the new kalam movement at the beginning of 20th century because they considered any any topic under uh, kalam uh, theology uh, in order to defend Islam and the prophet, etc. Nursi uh, seeks to formulate an Islamic metaphysics and theology primarily based on the Quran by using multiple fields. As I said, multiple fields, uh, kalam, fiqh, tasawwuf. And he combines these and, uh, of course, uh, based on the Quran. And uh, he writes, you know, theological uh, writings. Yeah, he makes theological writings. Uh, of course, this is a task, you know, Fazlur Rahman also from the modern period emphasizes that uh, uh, first duty is to formulate an Islamic metaphysics and theology, primarily based on the Quran. Similar to Ghazali's project, some experts uh, similar uh, say that similar to Ghazali's project, Nursi combined kalam, fiqh, and tasawwuf, then produced a Quran-based theology. Yeah, then produced a Quran-based theology by using opportunities of tafsir. Because tafsir 
in the classical period is a flexible discipline, all right? It is not a normative. It is not like fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence, Islamic law, or Islamic theology, kalam. These are normative. These are binding, normative. Their products, their results are binding. But uh, tafsir is, uh, even tafsir and hadith disciplines are called as tool sciences, you know? First duty, you know, tafsir provides actually what was the context of any Quranic verse? What was the uh, context uh, during the revelation of the Quran? The aim of the tafsir is provides uh, meanings, actually. What are the meanings of Quranic verses? And after, then when, once tafsir uh, actually identifies, discovers the true meanings, you know, meanings of the Quranic verses, it, it gives uh, these meanings to kalam and fiqh because they they will provide they provide uh, uh, rulings for kalam islamic theology provides aqida uh, creed and uh, fiqh provides practical rulings <clears throat> nursi used this you know the opportunities of this tafsir and produced a quran based uh, theology this is his multidisciplinary approach, as I said. This is his multidisciplinary method, <coughs> Quran based methodology, but uh, multidisciplinary approach. Combination of may taf, taf, combination of uh, tasawuf, fiqh, uh, kalam. Maybe discipline sometimes break into pieces. You know, he want, maybe he wanted to see a whole picture, you know, uh, whole picture, not just only through one discipline. And in another aspect, I will de discuss in detail, Nursi's collection can be considered as a, uh, is considered as a spiritual tafsir or manavi tafsir, a tafsir commentary, which focuses on meanings of the Quran or realities of the Quran, truth of the Quran. Uh, Imam Nursi clearly uh, actually states this in his uh, writings in a number of places. He clearly says, I will uh, cite later from him, uh, tafsir, Quran commentary is divided into two categories, lafzi tafsir, literal tafsir, and manavi tafsir, tafsir which focuses on meanings. And he says this, his collection is a second type of tafsir, uh, manavi tafsir, um, liter, uh, spiritual tafsir, or tafsir which focuses on meanings or realities of the Quran. And in another categorization, of course, a uh, thematic Exegesis. It is very common. It has become very common in the modern period. Uh, thematic tafsir, uh, thematic exegesis, just uh, selecting one theme, maybe topic, and putting together all the relevant verses or passages uh, in in the Quran and analyzing it. You know, uh, except for his one volume commentary, maybe uh, his uh, major works in his collection can be considered as a kind of thematic tafsir as well. Because if you open up any uh, sections from his collection, major collection, you will see that first he puts uh, a relevant verse, maybe some verses, and after that, you know, he elaborates these verses. You know, he expands on these verses. For this is a uh, thematic tafsir. He can be considered a thematic tafsir. <coughs> uh, and also, in terms of specifically his one volume commentary, uh, it, is a, it is a classical style tafsir, you know, one volume commentary, Isharatul Ujjaz, Science of Immutability. Uh, but of course, uh, there are really very unique contributions uh, in his uh, Isharatul Ujjaz as well. But specifically, he focused on and developed a theory of uh, Nazm. Nazm theory is very important. Maybe I will go into details uh, more. Uh, Nazm theory, uh, specific of course, Abdul Qadir, Kahir Jurjani, Sekkaki, uh, there are Balagha rhetoric uh, authors and scholars from the classical period. <clears throat> and uh, their uh, theories affected, of course, influenced uh, tafsir tradition. Zamakhshari applied, for example, Ka Abdul Qadir Jurjani's uh, theory of Nazm, uh, uh, then after that, uh, Baydavi, tafsir tradition. Uh, follow this you know, specifically uh, reason-based Quran commentaries. Follow this, uh, <clears throat> these uh, Balagha theories. And uh, Imam Nursi 
you know, actually develop, developed it further, even applied to every surah, every, every sentence, statement, every word, even every letter in his one volume commentary. But not just the Shara, his one volume com commentary is not just only a theory of Nazm, but he includes Islamic theology, other uh, philosophy of worship, uh, and there, there are many other topics as well. All right, but uh, first, uh, actually focused on tafsir in the classical and uh, modern period. I have uh, attempted to just provide outline uh, a brief summary of tafsir from the early spirit of Islam up to modern period in the uh, introduction. And the second chapter, chapter two in my book, <coughs> uh, titled Life of Said Nursi and the Risale Nur a Collection, a review. Uh, first section I focused on Said Nursi's life Old Said, New Said, and, and his intellectual career uh, specifically. Then after that, his theological thoughts. Uh, actually, what are his uh, theological thoughts? Then after that, uh, his approaches to the various Islamic disciplines. How he perceives, how he approaches, for example, Kalam or Fiqh or Tasawwuf or Tafsir or Hadith. Then after that, I have tried to provide uh, some information, background information with regard to new Kalam movement and attempts to revitalize uh, Kalam uh, and discussions uh, in his time in, in the 20th century. Because Mohammed Abdu Ahmed Khan, for example, Ismail Ismail Haqqi from uh, Turkey, uh, Harputi, you know, uh, Shibli Numani, you know, these are considered as proponents, supporters of new Kalam movement. Uh, Imam Nursi, Bediu Zaman also can be considered under uh, this movement, new, uh, new Kalam movement. Uh, his major works, uh, and then, you know, final section in this chapter, Foku, uh, actually introduced his major works briefly. Uh, yeah, and what, what are the themes of the, uh, his major works? And as I said, first focused on uh, major events which influenced him, his theological thought in his life, and <clears throat> where he studied Islamic sciences, uh, traditional medrasa education, modern sciences, characteristics of his periods of life. What are the characteristics of old Said, new Said? And then after that, focus, focusing on his theological thoughts, his approach to fundamentals of belief, such as existence of God, prophethood, the notion of hereafter. Then after that, his approaches to Islamic disciplines. Uh, I have included here just some uh, interesting uh, points uh, from this chapter. <clears throat> As I said, okay, we cannot cover just uh, with him a short period of time. He's, he himself divided his life into two main <clears throat> periods, the old Said and the new Said. And he says he found a way to the essence of reality through the guidance of the Quran within Kalam. Within Kalam. There is, as you can see, emphasis here uh, by employing both the heart and the mind. I will come to this, this point later. But he says that he has found, actually, he discovered a way to the essence of reality, a way to achieving, maybe receiving, reaching, or maybe understanding the essence of reality through the guidance of the Quran, but within Aqidah, within Kalam. As you can see, emphasis here is Kalam. And the experts, the great scholars such as uh, Oliver Lemon, Professor Oliver Lemon also considers this collection under Ahya and Tajdeed attempt in his uh, article, in his uh, one of articles, expressing uh, the principles of religion within a format that is generally accessible to the members of the uh, community. And main focus, uh, specifically fundamentals of faith, as I said, Tawheed, the divine unity, prophethood, Nubuwa, uh, Hashr, the resurrection of the dead, and justice, uh, Adala, and worship, Ibadah. And through his Quran, Quranic theology, a theology of the Quran, Nursi attempted to protect the fundamentals of Islamic faith from the materialistic challenges of, him, of the age. And in his way, he preferred exper experimental methods yeah, more experimental because it is also Quranic, you know, more uh, experimental method rather than for, for any uh, philosophical or, or uh, theoretical methods. 
His approaches to the various Islamic disciplines, I believe that this part also is important. Uh, and his Ihya, maybe reform, you know, how to translate, you know, Ihya Tajdeed, but proposal actually is more balanced now. You know, his, yeah, he, uh, <coughs> just let me, uh, yeah. His approach is more balanced. Of course, he attempts to, you know, he's, uh, you know, of course, in Islamic tradition, there is Ihya and Tajdeed concept, of course. Uh, <clears throat> but he argues, uh, he argues a more balanced, you know, uh, approach. Nursi means the Islamic discipline should be revitalized in a balanced way, on the basis of the tradition, in a balanced way. For example, he describes Mustafa Sabri Efendi uh, from the beginning of 12th century and Musa Jarullah Bigiev from Russia as the uh, first one uh, deficient, tafrit, and second one excessive ifra, respectively. Because why Mustafa Sabri Efendi had criticized Muhyiddin Ibn al Arabi. Uh, <clears throat> but he considered, Bedouzaman considers that this is actually tafrit, deficient, because uh, Ibn Arabi is considered within Ahl Sunnah, within the mainstream. Uh, yeah, it, of course, his way, maybe his uh, way is very, is very special, uh, not uh, open to every everyone, broader Muslim community, but he is considered one of the stars of the, uh, of Islamic tradition, you know, Ibn Arabi. And he, he considers Mustafa Sabri's this approach as deficient. And how about <clears throat> Musa Jarullah Bigiev and Musa Jarullah had some modernist uh, ideas which be, went beyond the traditional mainstream understanding. He considers a little bit uh, excessive ifrat. As you can see, he is more balanced, not uh, uh, <clears throat> not too much traditionalist, not too much uh, modernist, maybe you know, in a very more balanced way. He is a modern scholar, but uh, as I said, uh, he has his own way, uh, I should say. <clears throat> Nursi emerged from the tradition of the Islamic disciplines, but he put forward the essence of what the Islamic disciplines included in a different form. Uh, Professor Adnan Aslam uh, specifically uh, emphasized this one. He put, for, he put forward the essence of what the Islamic disciplines, as I said, multidisciplinary approach, <clears throat> combination of tasawwuf, kalam, fiqh, uh, while Nursi deals with some topics related to fiqh, Islamic law, such as polygamy, slavery, inheritance, the notion of ijtihad, uh, so he did not write any specific book on fiqh because he leaves these top, such topics to fiqh uh, literature because his aim is uh, just focus, focusing on uh, aqidah, you know, uh, faith. Akida, faith, and Islamic theology, fundamentals of faith. Yeah. Uh, Imam Ghazali, for example, yeah, science of the hereafter. His main focus is uh, this uh, faith, Islamic faith, theology, and he considers that there are some challenges, maybe there are some, uh, yeah, there are some uh, challenges and uh, threats. And uh, of course, what was the main aim of Islamic theology, Kalam, to defend Islamic faith? Yeah, he, his main focus is more these fundamentals. And he just uh, focuses on some, uh, <clears throat> some, some topics with regard to Fikr, but he does not go into details much about on Fikr, with details for key rulings. He just leaves this area to, to, uh, to its lit own literature. Nursi's Quran-based methodology of explaining Islamic faith led him to go sometimes as far as to blame all of the classical traditions of Islamic thought, such as philosophers, mystics, and theologians, because they move away from the Quranic approach in some subjects. Let me explain it a little bit. His Quran-based methodology <coughs> you know, criticizes uh, you know, some aspects, you know, some aspects of philosophers, mystics, and theologians. Uh, for example, <coughs> this letter, uh, Fakhreddin Razi, a very famous Ash'arite theologian, and he, uh, and Muhyiddin ibn al-Arabi, a very famous Sufi mystic, Muhyiddin ibn al-Arabi wrote a letter, a short letter to Fakhreddin Razi, 
Fakhattin Razi is a theologian, Muhattin Razi is Sufi. And this letter is very important, I think. And this, is, this letter is translated into English, Professor uh, Muhammad Rustam from Canada. It is available, it should be available online. You can download it anytime. I can recommend you if you are interested, you can read it. And Imam Nursi includes this letter, not fully, of course, just he cites from this letter in his uh, Mektubas letters, one of the major uh, books of his collection. Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi says in his letter to Fakhreddin Razi that knowledge of God is different from knowledge of his existence. Yeah. Or knowledge of God is contrary to knowledge of his existence. What does this mean? <coughs> and uh, uh, Imam Nursi analyzes uh, what he actually, what Muhyiddin Arabi meant by this statement and what he's trying to say. Knowledge of God, ma'rifati ilahiyya, knowledge of God acquired through theology, ilmi kalam, is imperfect and unsatisfactory. <coughs> does not provide a perfect knowledge, Ma'rifati Kamile. Imam Ghazali also had criticized <coughs> a little bit Kalam as well. <coughs> and But following the way of the Quran results in, acquire, in acquiring perfect knowledge, Ma'rifati Tamme, and complete satisfaction, Huzur Etam. Knowledge gained through Tasawwuf. As you can see, there is a little bit criticism here. Maybe Kalam is more uh, more philosophical, more theoretical, maybe he may, he may, may not include maybe spiritual experience, maybe like Tasawuf one, maybe more, more maybe reason uh, rational, uh, but maybe it, it provides just one aspect of the uh, of this reality. But uh, maybe, it, maybe he wants to see, as I said, the whole picture. He criticizes uh, this one, not he doesn't provide perfect, uh, satisfactory. Now he criticizes Tasawwuf as well. Knowledge gained through Tasawwuf is incomplete when compared with knowledge acquired directly from the Quran. Some of Ibn Arabi's followers denied the universe's uh, existence, saying that la mevjuda illahu, only he exists in order to gain permanent uh, satisfaction, huzuru <coughs> da'imi. As you can see, uh, he also a little bit criticizes Tasawwuf, how they move, moved away, maybe uh, according, maybe Imam, according to Imam Rusi, maybe, as I said, just maybe they focus on just one reality, one aspect of, uh, he, want, he wants to combine this, because, for example, Kalam focus on ra more rational, maybe more uh, reason, Tasawwuf more, it's maybe heart, more spiritual one, but Quran invented, uh, combines reason and heart together, maybe more uh, he perceives that you know more you know, Quranic methods. Uh, we need to combine these uh, in order to acquire this ma'rifat ilah here and complete satisfaction. Uh, third chapter, tafsir <coughs> in the modern uh, period. Just a second. Uh, let me stop to share. Stop share it again. Yeah, a third chapter focuses on tafsir in the modern period and the Risale in the collection. As I said before, he divides tafsir, uh, literature, Quran commentary, commentaries into two categories. Literal tafsir <coughs> elucidates Quranic phraseology, phraseology and words. Ma'anavi tafsir, uh, Quran commentary on the meanings of the Quran and the realities of the Quran. And he clearly defines his collection as a kind of ma'anavi tafsir a commentary on the Quran's meanings in a number of places. Yeah. Ma'anavi tafsir elucidates and proves the Quran's truth related to belief with powerful argument, arguments. Uh, Nursi focuses in his collection on the meanings and message of the Quran, but as I said, rather than verse by verse uh, tafsir in a classical style commentaries, except one exception is his one volume commentary. While, while he was aiming to produce maybe 60, 70 volumes, but uh, he couldn't make it. Uh, but uh, he refers to uh, uh, his other writings, uh, just one volume during First World War without any resource, maybe by memory. He dictated to his students uh, yeah, 
this this is completed during the first world war as i said uh, during the war sharat al hijaz this classical style and is a reason based tafsir uh, reason based and nursi utilizes the methods of classical tafsir in his interpretation uh, <clears throat> ishara to one volume commentary specifically is very clearly tafsir quran commentary but his other his other works in his collection, as you can see, he defines as Manevi Tefsir. In Turkey, and uh, I know some academics critic some academics criticize Salin, or they say, oh, what type of Tefsir is this? Uh, how you know he, it doesn't look like a Tefsir, but uh, he himself, in in, a, in a several places in the collection, defines as Manevi Tefsir. Uh, tafsir uh, on the Quran, meanings of the Quran and realities. But this is not just one uh, description of Imam Nursi. Interesting that, as we, as we see multidisciplinary perspective here, uh, in a number of places, again, in the collection, he also defines his collection as a work of Kelam, as a work of Kelam, Islamic theology, in a number of places. And if you remember, I said before, I cited before, he says that he has discovered a way to, uh, to reality through, uh, actually within Kalam, within Islamic theology. Nursi emphasized the works of Risa, his Risala are lessons in the discipline of Kalam. And Risala showed a way to the essence of reality through logical proofs and scholarly arguments and a direct way of create greater sainthood within the sciences of Kalam. Akida and Usulidin, as you can see. Nursi combines a number of Islamic disciplines in his writings, attempting to see the whole picture as sciences and as sciences break religion into a separate pieces. Yeah. yeah. For example, each discipline dealt with one aspect of human being towards the essential reality. For example, philosophy and Kalam dealt with the reason aspect, Tasawuf dealt with the uh, heart aspect of humanity. According to Nursi, reality can be understood only through combining these two aspects. Yeah, according to Nursi, uh, according to Nursi, reality can be understood only through combining these two aspects because Quran deals with both aspects of humankind. Yeah, Nursi's approach to tafsir relies on the inimitability of the Quran, uh, specifically. His approach to tafsir relies on the inimitability of the Quran. In his Quran commentary, Isharat al Ijaz, written in his early life, he expanded on the inimitability of the Quran's word order, as I said, Nazm. Nazm. Yeah. And Ijaz al Quran in composition, Nazm is one aspect of the aspects of the Ijaz al Quran. And he mainly, he is. Uh, Approach to tafsir relies on Ijaz uh, al Quran, inimitability, uh, inimitability of the Quran. No, no. All right. Uh, and when he confronted with a general no, no. assault regarding the foundations no, no. of belief and the principles no, no. of Sharia, he countered these arguments with the truth of the Quran, no, which, no. He put for, which he put forward no. in the light of Genius. natural. Natural, rational logic and the sciences of this time. All right. And the place of the collection, Quranic exegesis, just a second. I think we have a little guest in the room. And inshallah, Dr. Hakan will be back in a few seconds. Uh, these things happen a lot out of control when we live with the reality of Zoom. You know, everything happens in the same place in the, you know, office, in the house. Uh, it is very sweet that she came to get some attention from her dad, I think. We have been receiving really good questions on the chat box and I, I'm very excited and very curious to hear the responses. 
And uh, there's a question which says, if the PowerPoint is available, I will definitely ask our speaker, inshallah. And uh, the topic is very, very interesting and we receive really deep questions. And feel free, please, uh, uh, to write all your questions on the chat box and we'll make sure to, to have an allocated time at the end uh, to address these questions, inshallah. So feel free to write all your questions on the chat box. Just sorry, uh, should, I, should I finish it? Just sorry, my daughter <laughs> came in. Uh, there was interruption okay. a little bit. Yeah, uh, uh, Hakan, your, uh, I think your camera is off somehow. We see uh, the dark screen. Just a second, just a second. Seen. Yeah, yeah, all right, yes. Uh, should I continue or maybe should I finish now? No, no, you can continue, inshallah. Yes, li little bit more, just finish, I will finish it. Then okay. after that, we can we can we can get some questions from the audience. Yes, we have uh, questions on the chat box on YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, All right, yeah, we, we can we can get those questions. As I said, the place of the collection in Tafsir, uh, specifically Manevi Tafsir, his emphasis on Manevi Tafsir. Just a second. Uh, Yeah, uh, his emphasis on Manevi Tafsir and his another description is Tafsir Shuhudi, trans empirical exegesis. Uh, this is also interesting, I think, uh, very unique one. Um, just briefly, uh, clarification of comprehensive expressions of the Quran by visible and experiential phenomena, interpretation of the Quranic realities as literal in the text by their manifestations in the visible world. Yeah. And in his another uh, place in collection, he it, he describes it as witnessing shahada. Should I think this description is connected with uh, his uh, description, uh, trans empirical exegesis tafsir shuhudi. All right, and uh, as I said, it can be considered as a kind of thematic tafsir because they discuss a topic under a title of a certain verse generally take into consideration unity of the topic and present the themes as an exegesis of numerous verses. And his one volume commentary, Ishara to the Anjaz, uh, is uh, classical style tafsir and he focuses on <coughs> uh, inimitability of the Quran's word order, Ijaz uh, Nazmi, he says, which is one of the aspects of, uh, it's one of the aspects of inimitability of the Quran. And he says, if obstacles had not uh, risen, such as the First World War and other parts and matters had contained other truth of exegesis, Mutafarik Haka Ike Tefsiriye, a fine broad commentary, Tefsiri Jami, Jami would have been written on the Quran. But as I said, just he achieved one volume. He, he was aiming a 60 to 70 volumes. Nursi also mainly examined the theory of word or the Nazm in his commentary and he applied comprehensively uh, to uh, every single verse, statement, uh, expressions, even word and letter. Uh, Professor Mohsen Abdul Hamid says, uh, maybe before Fakhreddin Razi, Abu Saud, Zamakh Sheikh Baydavi, maybe they did not apply in, a, in such a comprehensive manner. He applied it in detail, but this is just one unique aspect of Ishara to Liyajaz. Chapter 4 focuses on revelation and the nature of the Quran, and 5, Quran exegesis and uh, Nursi's exegetical methodolo methodology. With regard to this section, I have uh, I had produced another article. It is published uh, by uh, Islam and Christian Muslim, uh, Journal of Islam and Christian Muslims, Christian Muslim Relations, uh, <coughs> well, how he his approach to uh, Rivayat Tafsir, tradition-based uh, exegesis, interpretation, reason-based interpretation, linguistic, ling linguistic uh, rhetoric and exegesis, and some weaknesses uh, in the reason-based Quran commentaries. And uh, chapter six, time, uh, I will uh, wrap up, all right, I will finish uh, very soon. Nursi's approach to the Quranic sciences, we say uh, sciences of the Quran, Quranic sciences, 
And these are uh, discipline. These are these are fields uh, to help any Quran commentator uh, during the interpretation of the Quran. Uh, Quranic science is very uh, important. Now, in the modern context, we call it usul tafsir methodology or principles of Quran interpretation. But classical name is Quranic sciences, ulumul Quran. And in some parts of the collection, he uh, actually uh, discusses, uh, Imam Nursi discussed uh, some major uh, fields within Quranic sciences. For example, abrogation, very contemporary topic, abrogation, concept of abrogation, abrogation of any Quranic verse or uh, gradualism in Islamic legislation or yeah, and uh, different uh, different uh, ijtihads and uh, several uh, different interpretations. Muhkam and Mutashabi, clear and ambiguous verses. Specifically, this one is very important. I put some stuff very briefly. Concept of Mutashabi uh, and it is very important. Ijaz uh, al-Quran, even inimitability of the Quran is important. He has, uh, he approaches, he has approaches to Quranic narratives, Qasas al-Quran. Mushkil al-Quran, he focuses on uh, apparently contradictory passages in the Quran and he uh, uh, analyzes and munasabat al-Quran, harmony among the verse and chapters of the Quran. This is also very important. Uh, field under Quranic sciences, <clears throat> specifically in his first volume, in his one volume Quran commentary, he applies this, you know, what is Munasiba, for example, what is the connection, what is the relationship between the previous verse and following verse or verses or maybe one verse within, uh, within a chapter or a relationship uh, between uh, uh, multiple verses, <clears> tenacity <throat> or, or harmony or unity. Uh, for example, Mutashabi. <clears throat> uh, he says the styles of the Quran called Mutashabi put the forms before the people's eyes, uh, like telescopes or powerful uh, spectacles. Yeah, Mutashabi verses, ambiguous verses are figures of speech of an uh, obstur, uh, obstur kind because they depict uh, subtle truths. Yeah. Because of the intellectual capacity of the ordinary people, the Quran depicts the subtle truth in allegorical form with metaphors and uh, teshbih smiles. You know, uh, the ordinary people gather their information through their senses. For example, how Allah governs uh, the universe. How one if an ordinary person can understand it, maybe in the example of kingdom, you know, Bismillah, Allah, uh, Rahman, ala al uh, Rahman established, you know, on his throne, but this is literal meaning, of course. Uh, but uh, because of, until, you know, actually, Quran uh, through these mutashabi expressions consider uh, intellectual capacity of ordinary people. And these uh, metaphors or allegorical, uh, allegorical and mutashabi expressions actually uh, <clears throat> depict uh, subtle truths. Uh, Nursi thinks that mutashabi verses constitute a greater part of the Quran because Quran speaks to a wide, very wide spectrum and it was sent to guide humanity in every uh, century. And uh, um, multiple meanings, you know, multiple meanings, layers of meanings are also connected with mutashabi. Nursi says that in addition to the clear meaning of Quranic verses, fundamental meanings, clear meanings, there are numerous layers of meanings, you know, levels of meanings. It is called naratu bil ma'ani. Actually, this is uh, what Imam Nursi indicates here. This is uh, actually uh, mainstream classical hermeneutics, we should say. Classical Islamic hermeneutics accepts uh, multiple meanings. You know, it is called narratibul ma'ani, right? Multiple levels of meaning. There are maybe fundamental uh, literal meanings. In addition to fundamental literal meanings, there are other uh, levels of meanings, maybe deeper uh, level, de deeper levels of meanings. Uh, each verse maybe has uh, author meaning, inner meanings, inner dimensions. Uh, we see this 
you know, uh, classical hermeneutics in uh, Imam Nursi, in uh, Ustaz Nursi uh, as well. And uh, Imam Nursi, con Ustaz Nursi connects this with Mutashabdi, with the concept of Mutashabdi. Each Quranic expression has a universal content and it addresses each level of understanding in all times. Yeah. Any particular interpretation indicates only one aspect of that universal uh, content. Yeah. Quranic verses can address each level of understanding across different times, and this feature is connected with the notion of mutashabi uh, verses. Ijazul Quran, uh, Ijazul Quran, in the middle of the Quran, I have discussed a little bit, maybe I can skip this one, uh, uh, specifically in his one volume commentary, he focuses on the concept of nazm, uh, which is one aspect of the inimitability uh, of the Quran. Yeah. And there is a remarkable eloquence and stylistic fruity in the Quran's word order or composition, and this aspect is explained in his uh, commentary. Yeah. There is a great harmony and mutual support among the sentences, words, and letters in one verse. All the words in one in any verse look look to the one purpose, and there is a sublime harmony between verses and purposes. And when we come to modern period, uh, specifically there is a criticism of you know too much focusing on these technical details, technical linguistic rhetorical de details uh, and try to just uh, limit the text here that just to uh, narrations all right from the first three centuries. but as you can see, uh, Imam Nursi uh, he follows classical more classical uh, uh, majority of Quran literature, Quran tafsir literature, uh, yeah, yeah. in addition to reports, the you know, meanings of the Quran cannot be restricted to, restricted to just uh, reports, narrations from the earliest period and uh, Quranic uh, discourse, uh, meanings or verses of the Quran may include uh, other uh, meanings uh, and um, other meanings can be discovered and maybe dimensions of those meanings as well. And the uh, final chapter focuses on some exegetical traditions, theological tafsir, legal tafsir, mystical tafsir, and uh, scientific text tafsir, because these are uh, maybe trends in Quran uh, commentary. Uh, for example, some tafsirs just focus on a theology based, a theological, a theology based versus, uh, versus the theological contents of the uh, verses. Some Tafsir al fuqaha it is called a Quran commentary of Muslim jurists. Uh, some uh, Muslim jurists focused on just legal verses, just legal verses, mystical uh, interpretations, and scientific. Uh, he is one of the greater, one of the great supporters of scientific tafsir, scientific interpretation. I think I should be satisfied with these uh, contents because of the time uh, I have exceeded the time. Sorry, sorry for the interruption, my daughter. I think. Uh, Thank you very yeah, much. She's welcome. Woke up and she, yeah. She's she welcome. says enough, enough. Finish it. She she, <laughs> she woke up. <laughs> yes. It's in the morning and she may have missed her father. Yes. So thank yeah. you so much, Doctor Hakan. It was a, a very good uh, presentation, and right. I know the time is limited and we cannot dive into every single chapter in detail. But we have received really good questions. Before we go into the questions, I want to ask a question that I think everybody would be very happy to hear. And you mentioned in the third chapter when you talk about, you haven't uh, mentioned it here, uh, but you mentioned scientific exegesis, literal historical exegesis, uh, thematic exegesis, and feminist exegesis. So, uh, where to put uh, Said Nursi in terms of uh, this feminist exegesis? Is there anything, I mean, anything that we can understand from Nursi's approach in general about this concept? See, I think this is a very good question. And uh, you captured one thing <laughs> from my book. <laughs> I, I have included a section, but there is no section <laughs> about this. You captured very successfully. Yes, feminist, I have included as a one a trend, one trend in the modern period as feminist exegesis. 
uh, while there are some parts, few parts from the book, but maybe one specific research should be focused on this area. And he does not uh, much uh, focus on uh, fo focus on interpretation of verses related to women. Uh, but his, if you if you uh, if you have a look at the collection, he has some specific letters and risale and treatises and sections specifically on women, you know, uh, and ladies. And there is a, a treatise on. Uh, Head cover, you know, uh, hijab, all right. Uh, head cover, all right. Tesettür, risale uh, on tesettür, and uh, he actually he says, you know, uh, specifically legends of, uh, you know, my you know sister legends, you know, uh, you know he describes. Actually, he's very positive in terms of this, uh, uh, and as I said, there is not much material in the collection, but. I think I have come across in Isharat al uh, for example, uh, there will be, uh, you know, Huris, for example, in the heaven, you know, for Levalehum as Vajun Muta, you know, they, they will have they will have partners. For example, he says they will have part, you know, men will have uh, their own partners and women will have their partners, you know. Uh, he interprets, you know, in a balance, you know, you know including both gen, uh, both actually. Uh, genders, uh, I remember, and <clears throat> in addition, uh, as I said, he, he, it uh, it came to my mind. He uh, he includes both gen genders uh, in the interpretation of Lehum Ezvajun Mutahara. They will have partners in the heaven. Yes. Uh, <laughs> other than that, other than other than that, uh, I, I there is not much material, but there are specific uh, letters and treatises on specifically addressing uh, maybe uh, his uh, female followers, his uh, female followers in general, you know, female Muslims. But uh, he uh, considers that uh, women and very important like men, uh, specifically in, uh, in, uh, in spirituality, in religion, and uh, in spreading the truth to others. Yeah, specifically, yeah, I Thank should say that. It was, a, it was a, probably a half a page in the book, but it attracted my attention. So I see, I see. I have, in, I, I have included, as I said, because it is very common uh, trend as well. It is included now, and there are literature. There are. Uh, I don't know if anyone touched upon this, but this can be a good research. Bedu uh, Zaman's uh, uh, approach to uh, women. And uh, specifically, and maybe his letters and uh, treatises on this concept. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did not see much. Just there are some parts in in his one volume Quran, Quran commentary. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Hakan. I would like to ask my do uh, sister uh, Yonara for her question first before we go into the questions in the chat box of YouTube channel. So Yonara, do you have any questions before we move on to the? our audience's questions. Yes, I do. Um, Dr. Hakan, thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, it was a pleasure seeing your daughter too, listening to her, that was the cutest yeah. thing. But I have three questions for you. So, and I hope they won't take much time. So the first one is, if the Quran is the perfect book, so yes. why does it need to be contextualized and interpreted? That's the first one. Right. The second one that I have is, can any Muslim uh, interpret the Quran, I mean, accurately? I and see. the third one and final is, what makes nurses collection, I mean, unique among other Quranic uh, commentaries? All right. Uh, thank you so much. Very good questions. Very interesting question. With regard to your first question, uh, Quran uh, itself uh, divides uh, its verses into two categories. Some verses are very clear, which are the essence of the Quran, but some other verses are ambiguous, muteshabi, open then more interpretation. Some areas in the Quran and Sunnah deliberately are left to human mind, uh, left to scholars, uh, Muslim ulama, uh, and we say the Islam is universal religion, uh, and then some parts. Uh, provide flexibility to interpret 
more than one way. All right. And why, uh, as I said, some parts uh, need uh, scholarly interpretations, uh, scholarly knowledge and scholarly uh, interpretation. And also we say the Quran is universal, but its universality, which is applicable to our own context, needs scholarly expertise, needs scholarly interpretation. I believe that Bedu Zaman Ada, some other contemporary scholars captured, as I said, specifically uh, Quranic uh, message and it's specifically universality, which is connected with our time, which is relevant to our time, need, needs to be needs to be discovered, needs to be <coughs> emphasized. Maybe each time, each time uh, there might be more emphasis on some specific uh, contents of the Quran. We see Bedu Zaman, for example, focuses more on uh, focuses more on, for example, fundamentals of faith. Just I think your daughter wants to be among us. <laughs> she she wants to be a part of the discussion. I think when she grows up, yeah. inshallah, inshallah. Um, and with with regard to your second one, just because uh, not of course everyone can uh, everyone can uh, think about the Quran. Everyone can think about Quranic verses. Can we can uh, ordinary Muslims? Everyone can. Uh, reflect on Quranic verses, uh, try to understand, maybe connect the message of the Quran with his or her own life. But in order to make a scholarly interpretation, uh, of course, uh, there are some sciences need to be studied in order to become a really authoritative Quran commentator. Yeah, we have <coughs> great commentators from the classical to modern period, but they they have they have they are trained, they have studied. Uh, but if someone uh, doesn't have any uh, scholarship uh, expertise, still he or she can reflect on the Quran. He or she can read, try to understand the Quran. Uh, he can or she can make reflections. And third one, uh, your third question, uh, uniqueness. Uh, uniqueness, I think, uh, teaching classic, you know, providing classical teaching with uh, with a unique style and language which is accessible to modern time. This is, I think, uniqueness of Imam Nursi and his multidisciplinary approach, his multidisciplinary approach and combination of Islam, uh, Islamic disciplines and uh, uh, unique style and language which is uh, compatible to modern readers, I should say. And his main focus is on uh, Specifically, uh, fundamentals. Uh, wh what is existence? What is human being? What is nature? What is universe? Uh, what is the purpose of our existence? Uh, specifically, he the, uh, he is engaging with with our main questions uh, in a very unique way and uh, uh, maybe connected with tradition, but in a more modern uh, style and language. I should say. I hope I, as I answered your questions. Yes, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. those are really good answers. It, it really clarifies what I was trying You're to welcome. understand. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. Dr. Hakan, we have a few questions on the chat box and actually very many questions. I don't know if you will have enough time for each of them. But the first one is by Nejam Khan. And he says, is this PowerPoint available? Is it possible to share the PowerPoint? We can give an email uh, address and... Um... Uh, yeah, I can share it. I can share it, no problem. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, will, I will send it to the uh, chat box, uh, the email address that you can send if you want the PowerPoint is uh, info at respectgs.us. So, Anybody who is interested in the PowerPoint, you can send an email to this address in right. respectus.us. And Nejam Khan asked another question. Yes. Thematic tefsir is heavily used by Shia scholars. Does yes. the altar refer to Shia thinkers as well? Uh, I, don't, I, uh, I did not focus on uh, Shia uh, scholarship, uh, mainly Sunni one, because Imam uh, Nursi is uh, a Sharite uh, Sunni theologian, and thematic tefsir uh, is not specific to uh, Shiites, and many Sunni ulama, many Sunni scholars uh, apply this uh, 
uh, thematic tefsir as well. Actually, if you look at the Muslim world, many uh, research, master and PhD thesis are thematic, mainly. Uh, notion of uh, justice in the Quran, notion of women in the Quran, notion of uh, something, in the, you know, all, all thematic. You know, many, many, many research, all thematic. Many all thematic. And this is very modern, uh, very modern tendency. I'm taking full time to, uh, you know, attend your daughter. We are here, and there is another question. Uh, yeah, yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Just a second, just a second. Okay, take your time, take your time. Yeah, these are the realities of life, right? Uh, you are, a, you know, he's a scholar and he's also a daddy, you know, for her. And she has every right to interfere. There is nothing we can say. We just have to respect. There are really good questions on the chat box. Uh, Okay, we'll attend these questions very soon, inshallah. Everyone, just bear with us. Um, this is very sweet. You know, I Sorry, see just, her. Just so okay, please, please. I, I, I see her interference as a cry to future. She wants to <laughs> be a student of Risalino, inshallah. inshallah. She wants Hopefully. to be present. She wants to be a part of it. Inshallah. Yeah. Sorry uh, um, if uh, if they did interrupt. Uh, yeah, uh, I can uh, get uh, another uh, question. Yes. To yeah. The book. Aisha, Aisha Arun from uh, the chat box asks. Yes multiple questions and uh, the first one is Said Nursi is heavily influenced by Kurdish Sufis such as Abdurrahman Taghi to the extent to the extent he says it is these people who will conquer the earth yes and it continues and therefore possibly focused less of fukuh within his tefsir can we say that he is less focused of uh less of fukuh within his tefsir. <coughs> uh, all right. Uh, of course, the, you know, the, he studied in the east of eastern or east of Turkey and traditional madrasas. Of course, some of his teachers uh, can be a Kurdish origin. There is no you know, any issue. And he studied during the Ottoman period. There was no such a, you know, uh, such a thing, Kurdish, you know, all Ottoman, under Ottoman uh, period. And uh, specifically, when just not not just only uh, that maybe Kurdish background uh, Sufi. And when we look at his collection, he refers to some major Sufis and mystics. For example, Imam Rabbani. Uh, for example, Abdul Abdul Qadir Jilani. You know, Shahi Jilani. These two figures are very crucial in his transformation into New Said. If you look at, you know, he opens up uh, Imam Rabbani's uh, Mektubat and he. Uh, he comes across a letter, a letter to Bedu Zaman. There was another Bedu Zaman, and he considers that this letter is specifically for himself because he was uh, he had a, a spiritual crisis like Imam Ghazali uh, during that period. And uh, Ibn al Arabi, there are references to Ibn al Arabi, Shahi Gailani, Imam Rabbani, and uh, for this reason. And not just only, as I said, uh, specifically, uh, he uh, he refers to some major mystics uh, and major uh, Sufis in uh, in his collection. And as I said, his collection includes uh, specific, maybe tasawuf aspects specifically. Uh, even though he does not clearly uh, connect himself with any Sufi group because of maybe his time, his context, but. Maybe you know Nakshi, you know Imam, uh, specifically in uh, Imam Nakshbandi, Imam Ghazali, Imam Rabbani, Shahi Gailani, uh, and he, uh, Sheriff Martin is expert uh, on, on Bedou Zaman as well. He says that he, his elusive style, you know, and his 
you know, spirituality is there in the collection. Spirituality is included. And uh, Sufism, Tasawuf is not a luxury uh, discipline. Maybe uh, even though he does not clearly uh, connect himself with any Sufi order, etc. But uh, but uh, what is the main theme of his topic is faith. Then Tasawuf, uh, what is the main theme of Tasawuf? Faith and spirituality, definitely Nursi's main theme. And uh, Nursi, Imam, uh, Ustaz Nursi includes these uh, fundamentals, fundamental themes uh, within uh, Islamic spirituality, tasawwuf. Yeah. Okay, uh, there are some. There, there are some. There are some relevant literature on this uh, topic. You know, you know, the question can I can have a look at those, the, those literature. Yeah, they can write to you or write to this email, yeah. maybe, and we can. Yeah. 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 Uh, another, I mean, she follows up. She says, "Could we therefore say it is more of a tevil instead, as Nursi does refer to windows opening, rather than finding answers from deep study? Although, of course, he is a well-read scholar in both sciences and Islamic studies since early childhood." She's asking, um, can we say, can we call his collection a te'wil rather than tefsir? Te'wil, definitely, definitely, definitely. Te'wil, yeah, te'wil, uh, yeah, makes more sense. Te because tefsir in a later tradition uh, is connected with more reports, reports-based uh, interpretation from the early spirit of Islam, you know, reports-based, for example, what the prophets said about one verse, what some companions said about uh, one a particular verse or what a tabi'in we say successes, all right? One uh, specifically one uh, based on narration tafsir, but ta'wil is, uh, includes context, uh, selection of multi, you know, one of the possibilities of meaning maybe because there is possibility of multiple interpretation and Quran commentator selects one, or maybe interpretation by reason, interpretation by Arabic language, rhetoric, and maybe interpretation by uh, reference to uh, interpretation uh, by intuition, what they, what the Sufis call kashf intuition. We see they, these all included, then ta'wil uh, is a better term, definitely. Ta'wil, yeah. But, but, uh, yeah, but as a concept within uh, within tafsir, we can call it ta'wil, but uh, tafsir, when we say, is, uh, of course, more uh, commonly used for this reason. Uh, but I said modern interpretation, but he says himself as tafsir. Yeah, tafsir, mm -hmm. but he may, he may refer, maybe he may mean ta'wil, but because we, we commonly, we, we, uh, we, in general, we use as tafsir. Yeah, okay. I hope I answered that. Thank you. Uh, she has another question. It's uh, following up. Uh, third question, is this reality being foreign to traditional tafsirs we know? Why Nursi's work hasn't reached large audiences it, it perhaps deserves? Could you repeat last sentence, please? Yes. Uh, is this reality? which means being foreign to traditional tafsirs we know. Yes. Is, is this reality why Nursi's work hasn't reached large audiences it perhaps des deserves? I see, I see. Good question. We cannot claim, you know, such a big claim. We cannot make, we cannot make such a big claim. You know, traditional uh, literature definitely includes realities or ways to reality, but... Uh, Imam Nursi says that uh, he discovered a way, maybe a shortest way, a short way to reality uh, through guidance of the Quran. You know, he says his main teacher is the Quran. He discovered, he, he says that he discovered a way to, short, maybe shorter way to reality, like the way of the Sahaba companions, directly from the Quran, through the way of the Quran, but within the Kalam. And uh, with God's help, you know, Allah uh, helped him and allowed him. And he said that uh, he put together very complicated things in a in a, in a easy manner, yeah, in a in a in a very uh, comprehensive manner. He put together many complicated, you know, difficult maybe 
uh, classical literature definitely include uh, includes reality uh, and ways to reality. Maybe he says maybe in the traditional uh, period period maybe you need you need a time maybe say this look maybe how long maybe how many years maybe uh, you need to devote yourself uh, to uh, study to maybe practice say this look to uh, to experience maybe to experience and to practice. Uh, Islam and religion, maybe after how many years, maybe you come to a, a some level, or maybe so, uh, or maybe uh, you are uh, closing it. He says that through you know, reading the, this book, through the guidance of the Quran, he discovered something which is uh, which is a way to reality, and within this akida and kalam, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he is also uh, he is also very very surprised he's he's really you know sometimes he says i have captured some meanings but i didn't capture some of them maybe i don't know he's he's received sometimes maybe some special ilha, maybe inspirations maybe i but he says uh, i have in some places in the, in the collection i have captured some meanings but unfortunately <laughs> i missed some of other meanings maybe during his special time maybe he uh, maybe some special meanings might re, uh, you know he might receive he, he he received maybe but he he missed some of them yeah he, we, uh, i think very good question we cannot uh, he doesn't make such a claim we cannot make such a claim but he says he discovered a way to reality with through the guidance of the quran within akide kalam and usul al din and uh, and allah he says god helped him to put together many complicated things uh, in a shorter and easiest way, he says. Yeah, this is his mm -hmm. arguments. Uh, uh, I I ask the question, or please read the whole collection. Then uh, maybe I should ask you, you know, what is your experience? You know, what what do you think about his uh, arguments? Yeah, mm -hmm. have you experienced or have you well, what he says? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am just I am I'm just only transmitter of what he says. <laughs> Thank you, right. Dr. Hakan. Uh, there is a follow-up, another question by Aisha. I think she's writing an essay here with us with these questions. <laughs> right. I think she's a master's student and she's interested in these topics very deeply. So it comes from her very authentic uh, self. So is perhaps his tafsir as a whole a tajdeed itself? Rewriting how Muslims should approach the Quran in the modern era. Yeah, in, in its own way, this can be a, a unique, a different type of tafsir. Uh, as I said, thematic style tafsir, you know, he puts together, he puts at the beginning of any section relevant verses, then he elaborates on it. Definitely, this can be a, a different, uh, can be considered a different style, different type of uh, style of tafsir. Maybe this can be more easier for modern readers, more accessible to uh, uh, community and uh, masses. I think, yeah, this can be. In terms of uh, volume, Isharat al Ijaz also uh, very connected with the tradition, but maybe it has it has also its own uh, style. Yeah. And it is, I think, it's unique style. It's unique style and language accessible, and its format accessible to, uh, to the community, uh, to 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 the people. Uh, yeah, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, another question by Nejam Khan: Can yes. this classified as Tafsir bir Ray? Definitely, I I I have included on the slide Tafsir. Definitely, Tafsir. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, mm. yeah, reason-based tafsir, definitely. And it is uh, uh, up to modern period, when we look at classical tafsir literature, it is uh, more ash'arite, reason-based. When we look at classical periods, first classical, second classical, uh, major Quran tafsir, tafsir, Quran commentaries, uh, look at Fakhrettin Razi, Beydavi, uh, the Ashari and also Maturidi, uh, Ashari and Maturidi, yeah, mainly uh, mm -hmm. Diraya. And yeah. when we say reason-based tafsir, when we say reason-based tafsir, uh, 
interpretation by reason and specifically Arabic language because Quran was revealed in a highest level of Arabic and language uh, of the Quran and the rhetoric of the Quran allows uh, different interpretations, possibilities. For this reason, it is reason-based and reason-based commentary is connected with Arabic language, yeah, language and Arabic literature. Thank you. Uh, I think this is a, a question about clarification when you mentioned multiple meaning. Uh, yes. Khan, Nejam Khan is asking, is it multiple meanings or diverse understandings? Can we say diverse understandings? Definitely we can say diverse understandings. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Diverse understandings. Yeah. Thank diverse, you. Uh, uh, diverse understanding. Uh, yeah, in addition to multi, you know, fundamental meaning, you know, there are uh, diverse, yes, diverse understanding. Um, uh, and as I said, uh, classical hermeneutics in, uh, accepts uh, mahani, multiple you know, meanings of uh, multiple meanings, meanings, uh, yeah, multiple layers of meanings. But yes, the diverse interpretations, definitely. And mm -hmm. which, were, yeah, definitely. Uh, in addition, you know, um, multi fundamental meaning, you know, fundamental meaning. What is the intentional one is already is provided specifically for some verses by Sharia, by the Quran, by the prophets, uh, by, by the report, maybe from authoritative companions, but uh, there are other possibilities because text allows these possibilities, yeah. diverse interpretations. Yeah. Uh, the follow-up question by Aisha Arun again is Nursi hints to dialogue and unity of Muslims throughout his work. Could this, could this be a reason why he avoids associating a school of thought to his writing? Uh, specifically in his early side period, uh, he wanted to unite, you know, Muslim uh, Ummah. Uh, he engaged with politics, but in the second, in his new side period, he mainly focused on uh, Quran, mainly focused on Islamic theology, and uniting the Ummah, you know, he, he had a sermon in Sham, you know, Hutbe Sham is published as well. It is one of the, the works in his collection. He addresses the Muslim world. Uh, definitely, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he would be happy, you know, uh, Muslims, uh, Muslim Ummah, Muslim community, uh, will be in a will be in a harmony uh, and uh, living together. Uh, but uh, he says that your questioner asked that you know he doesn't follow any school. But we cannot uh, say this one. He he follows mainly, as I said, his in his theological tafsirs, in his theological interpretations. He mainly follows uh, Ashari theology. Ashari Ashari theology. Of course, when we say Ashari. Uh, Ashari Maturidi uh, later period they made uh, Muslim ulama they closed together they, they made it closer to each other Ashari Maturidi when we say Ashari uh, sometimes uh, they it refer this it includes Maturidis as well yeah, because uh, mainly when we look at tefs, in tefsis more uh, Quran commentators actually were uh, Ashari he was a Shafi'i he was yeah, in, 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 in law, in fiqh, uh, he followed a Shafi'i and he was a Ishari. And when you look at his theological writings, he mainly follows uh, Ishari theology. Yeah, Ishari theology, except there are exceptions, uh, uh, though there are some exceptions, but mostly he follows Ishari theology. Ishari, Ishari theology. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if he, he, while he does not uh, discuss fiqh, but he uh, in in his own life he follows Shafi'i school in fiqh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I think this will be our last question again by uh, Aisha Ru. Nursi hints to dialogue and unity of Muslims throughout his work. Uh, no, I said this one. I'm sorry. This is the next question. Considering yes. the context he is writing in, the fall of the Ottoman era, several yes. racial conflicts and secular nation building as threats of as threats to Muslim unity. 
Yes. As a third, he tends to be out of place when lecturing in Arabic throughout Arabia or writing for a majority Turkish speaking Republic of Turkey. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I think, what, what can I say about this question? I think uh, he accepts the reality now, nation states. And now, Muslims today, Muslim, many contemporary Muslim ulama also accept. Uh, you know, nation state and uh, in today, you know, na specifically nation state. And uh, some of his writings mainly were in Arabic, such as Ishara to the Ajaz, Muhakamat, with Peishamiye, Arabic. But because of his context in Turkey, he mainly uh, actually uh, wrote and uh, actually addressed in Turkish language. But uh, I think uh, he mainly focused on uh, community, uh, more civic. Yeah, yeah, more civic uh, way. In a more civic way, uh, not he done. He didn't want to en engage in politics or, or maybe state. Uh, yeah, he mainly focused maybe or more civic way. I should say, yeah, more civic way and more uh, community uh, based, uh, addressing the Muslim community, not not uh, in a political maybe. Uh, discussion, disputes, etc. This is uh, this is his uh, his method, I should say, what I understand. But he he accepts the reality even be after the nation state, maybe after the Republic of Turkey. He says even uh, jihad by sword is uh, uh, is not applicable anymore. Even uh, jihad, you know, by war now is more uh, Quranic way of jihad. You know, uh, jihad. Uh, struggling or st spreading the knowledge or uh, teachings of the Quran through Quranic argument, through its own arguments, uh, he accepts the reality. Yeah, I, I, I should say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I want to say that you know I have uh, the book in front of me, and you have dedicated yes. the book. To, you have dedicated the book to your daughter. Yes, they my daughter. Yes, yeah, my wife. Yes, you know, no yes. wonder she's around you and she wants to be involved. She's around me, yeah, she doesn't know yet, but <laughs> yes. she wants to she be heard. You. you wanted her voice to be heard by the maybe, audience. Maybe. I'm here, the book is written because of me. You know, yeah, it is yeah, maybe. To yeah, me. yes, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Uh, it is the I have dedicated this uh, to my daughter because my wife yeah, suggested this one. Definitely, she doesn't know yet. She is nearly three years old, but hopefully in the future she will see. <laughs> Thank yes, you. She will realize it later, inshallah. But yeah. uh, for the audience, I think this was this was great. There were a lot of very interested questions, and I definitely highly recommend the book. And there are really extensive um, chapters about the questions that are asked, and. Um, uh, I, I see four chapters specifically focusing on Nursi's commentary and its role and its place in the uh, traditional exegetical uh, tradition. So thank you so much. And we really appreciate your taking time, you know, uh, and taking care of your daughter, even though she was interfering and wanted to be with us. And uh, thank you so much. I just wanted to, I also want to uh, announce for our next discussion. Uh, uh, okay, there is another question. Okay. Uh, by Nejem Han, I just received a message, uh, you know, saying that there is one more question. And Nejem Khan is asking, Nursi says about Aya light, uh, Nur, yes. I think, verse of Nur points to uh, rally. Oh, yeah. uh, rally. Yes, yes. Yeah. Do you agree with that interpretation? Uh, good question. But uh, I should say that this, uh, as I said, it is connected with his notion of Muteshabi. You know, Quran, uh, with regard to scientific interpretation, Quran says that uh, uh -huh. Imam Nursi. Imam Nursi says that uh, Quran not you know directly indicates maybe uh, any modern discoveries, but uh, 
in a hidden way implies you know there are what he says there are uh, some signs and implications in a not direct way because uh, it cannot be possible because directly quran directly addresses seventh century uh, uh, people in arabian so uh, saudi arabian context but uh, but he quran implies uh, quran implies uh, these uh, may imp implies these modern uh, discoveries you know he says he argues as i said it is uh, imam nursi uh, what is the base of this imam if you remember i said imam nursi is one of the great supporters of scientific interpretation uh, scientific tafsir scientific interpretation and his basis i think is uh, in line with imam ghazali like fakhreddin razi quran includes uh, essences of <coughs> uh, everything because it is the word of allah it is the word of god kalamullah then you know somehow it may imply <coughs> a modern period as well quran because of its uniqueness actually uh, even uh, there is one verse in the quran everything dry and fresh is included in a clear record according to one interpretation interpretation clear record is the quran but other interpretation says it is you know preserved tablets you know but uh, imam nursi because he supports a scientific interpretation he accepts a second interpretation it, it is the quran and he actually why he focusing on because modern period is the period of reason rationality uh, science and because uh, attacks you know uh, come from science attacks to faith comes from science i think he attempted to provide foundations of uh, uh, Islamic teaching, Quranic teaching to science, all right? Uh, what is science or what is uh, nature? What is universe? What, what is physical nature? I think he wanted to, attempted to provide a basis or foundations of relationship between science and religion. And uh, as I said, this is, uh, he says, one of the possibilities of, inter possibilities of interpretation and Quran can imply, can uh, imply this one it may be some uh, modern discoveries as i said electricity but he doesn't say that definitely this verse refers to this one but he implies this can be one of the possible interpretations and options ta'wil yeah definitely he is mm -hmm. making ta'wil mm -hmm. and he doesn't say that this is exactly what is the intentional meaning of this verse and god clearly uh, intends electricity he doesn't say he does, he says quran may imply may include this one Thank you. And he wrote, uh, Nejam Khan wrote one uh, also, okay, to electricity as a whole, as you mentioned, and will you classify as, will you classify it as tefsiri ilmi as well? Yes, definitely. Tefsiri ilmi, scientific tefsir, yes, same. As I said, he, he is one of the great supporters of tefsir ilmi. Ilmi tefsir. Ilmi tefsir, scientific tefsir, definitely. Yeah. Thank you so you, much, Dr. Hakan. You're welcome. You're welcome. We really appreciate your time. You're and, welcome. I uh, hope uh, I hope it was uh, it has been uh, useful, beneficial for the audience. It was, it was very uh, a great session about Quran and Quranic exegesis and the role and the place of uh, Nursi's exegesis among the tradition, and uh, we really appreciate your time and thank you for welcome. joining us. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation, Zuleha and Yonara. Nice to meet you. Thank you for the uh, audience and thank you for the questions. I hope, as I said, uh, you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. It was, a pleasure. it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Appreciate it. Welcome. Welcome. Have a good day. Before, before we finish up for today, I want to announce our next uh, speaker and our next uh, topic, inshallah. We'll have two sessions with Dr. Kerim Balji. Uh, and the topic will be about the text and the context. Uh, Ibn Zaman or Ebul Waqt is Bedu Zaman Said Nursi, a child, a son of his time, and literary instruments of surpassing the context. How and why Epistles of Light, written a hundred years ago, are still relevant to our problems. 
And another question we will be dealing with uh, is, is a decontextualized reading still useful? And how much the text contains the context in it? And how relevant the life of the altar is to a better understanding of the world? So we will deal with the quest, uh, you know, these questions and similar questions with Dr. Kerim Balji in two sessions. And our next session will be on June 20th. And the one after will be two weeks after that. So thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you with us uh, on June 20th with Dr. Kerim Balji. Thank you.